Hey, it's Jill with Crick Flicks. Um, I told you in my last video I was going to be t doing Thomas the Train, and which I've done, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, where I got my template was from a coloring book. Um, these are great tools to get um, your pictures for. You can get them online too if you do your character Google search with the character and type in um, coloring pages and it'll bring them up. But since I have three grandchildren that color, I go ahead and buy the coloring books um, for all the, well, I shouldn't say for all of them because I don't use everything that I have, but I do buy the coloring books and use those to make the templates. And again, I did these in layers. Um, here's the picture that I was working from. Um, I picked out a picture that was the entire train. And then I did it by sections. First, my black base, which would be this piece. And then I'm going to build off of that. Now, I started to assemble it because it takes a little bit um, the first times I do it, and I don't want to spend a half an hour um, videotaping putting it together. But anyway, here's the black base. And then the next piece I cut out, I'm trying to figure out how, rather than to make a whole bunch of little tiny pieces, how to make this one cut. And actually, this was the first time I did it that I think it came out perfect. And here is that one cut. That's my blue layer that is going to go here. And then the last piece I did were the little sections um, to get my colors so I knew what colors I needed since coloring book and nothing's in there and I'm not that familiar with um, I don't watch Thomas the Train often so I'm not real familiar I need a uh, reference and so I've just used the cover so I got the you know that there's the red outlines and the yellow and and whatnot that's what I used and that was my last layers that I did and here they are. I, like I said, I have most of it put together. So you're gonna, I'm just gonna finish putting this piece together. Now that I have the template, I can make it in any size I want. If I wanna make it into my two foot center pieces, I can make this train two feet long. Um, pretty much any size that I want. Oops, I see there's some little pieces that didn't come out here. Let me take those out real quick. These um, B tweezers are the best. I love the fine tip on them. Couldn't find a pair the other day and I picked up a, a pair with the great big old old style um, tweezers and could barely even use them. I'm so used to these B tweezers. Okay, now I'm going to use my famous zip drag glue. Boy, it's really clogged up tonight which is unfortunate because this is a brand new bottle. Oh. So annoying. And I wouldn't even bother with it except that it is, to me, by far the best glue out there. But I've tried everything under the book from storing it upside down to storing it with a pin stuck in it to putting the lid on every time I used it. I've done about everything and I can't seem to figure figure out how to keep it from clogging up on me. If anybody out there uses this glue and is watching this video and you have suggestions on how to keep that glue um, clogging on me so bad, I would love it if you'd share that with me. Because again, I absolutely love the glue, but I hate how bad it, it clogs. There's my blue layer. And I'm going to just throw the glue right inside these boxes here. And I'm about to resort to not even, oh, it's making me nuts. Okay. Anyway, let me put in my little layers here. And sometime I could sit in front of the computer and really demonstrate on how 
easy it is to make, well, I shouldn't say easy, it is a lot of work to make these cuts. However, once you've done it, you have it, you don't ever have to do it again. What I did on these pieces for the front and his face is I cut out the base in the black, then put the gray on it, and I did a little faux stitching. Since this is going to be black on black, I wanted it kind of pop out. You know what? Actually, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to cut this piece off so it doesn't show in the background. I'm going to do something different here, and I'm going to pop that up instead of gluing it down flat. I guess I didn't need that end of the blue, um, but again, when I'm making these cuts, it's trial and error. They aren't perfect every time. Um, I mean, they're good enough. I, um, I mean, I think he came out really cute, but every time I put one together, I see something that I might end up changing the next time I cut one out. Um, and on this one, I would cut that, that piece of the engine off there. Oh, yeah, see, I like that better popped up. That gives a little, yeah, I like that a lot, actually. And I'm going to put in these little yellow pieces. Don't even know what they are. Um, when I make these, though, I, I really tone down the the detail um, so it is not all the lines that you see in the coloring book. Um, I have learned over time making these that uh, that's not necessary. There, there, there are way too many um, details in there that I used to try and do and I've mentioned that on previous videos that you don't have to do that. that kind of takes away the fun of doing these when it's very frustrating. You know, this blue paper, I don't know where on earth I got it, but the original sample I did of Thomas was out of this lighter blue. Then when I look at the book, it's more of a royal blue, not so light. And so I didn't have any really good royal blue paper in stock. I can't believe it with all the paper that I do have. I can't believe I didn't have a royal blue. So I just, I, I found this one and it's not the normal paper I use and I don't know why, but it's horrible to glue down. It um, doesn't stick until the glue is completely dry. So I have to hold it down. I don't know what it is. If I figure it out, I will never buy it again. Then, the next thing I'm going to do, and I have to get it out, and I may not be able to do it because, here it is. I am going to take my IROC. If you aren't familiar with the IROC, it's this little tool that heats up, and you use it to adhere... Um, embellishments that I just threw all over because I'm trying to find the color that I think I'm going to use the red. Yeah, that's a hard. I can't use the red. Um, I don't think I have any silver on hand. So, you know what? I'm not going to um, have you sit and watch me fumble around here for too much longer. But I'm going to take these little metal eyelet or little metal gems or I don't know what they're called. Um, and who is this made by? Imagine Esque. And you use this hot little gun here to set it, to set them. It melts. It's got a little bit of glue underneath it. And when this heats up, it melts the glue that's underneath this little brad or this little button thing and it hears it so they don't fall off. You can use um, the brads too that open up um, from the back and you could use those in the centers of your t of your wheels or your train yeah, one of the train wheels. Um, 
that you can punch a hole and I have little tiny ones and big ones, but I felt like showing you how I use the Imagine, Imagine S, um, little heat tool. So, other than I'm not real crazy about this blue paper, however, this was just a sample. I don't really care when, when I do my next paper run, I'll pick up some royal blue or the color of blue that I need for the train. But there you have it. Um, I think it came out pretty cute, actually. One thing I did notice though that I'm missing is the lights here. When I'm looking at the book here, they're clear color. I, I'll figure out something on it and add that. I did miss that, but you can get the idea. Again, that was my, my test run to see. My main concern is those little tiny pieces at the end, and that's if anybody out there uses the scales or is thinking about buying it, somebody would ask me, um, you can purchase it online, however, it will not work with the Cricut machines. You would need to have a different machine. You can't get it anymore to use on the Expression machines. But anyway, um, the main thing that I wanted to get was this, this big blue piece all in one rather than little tiny pieces because then, then it gets to be too much work. And these little ends at the... This is why I do so many sample runs too, because then when I look at it done, I know what I'm missing, so I can go back and, and add those to my SVG. If you have any questions, just leave them, and I'm going to show you too. I told you last night when I was filming that I was going to be working on that um, poo theme invitations, and I showed you how I had... had um, built it in the Cricut craft room and colored it and everything but I didn't show you what I was working from as my theme and that's the picture actually with the, the party theme I, I'm not really sure that looks like a picture frame to me but this is a picture she sent me and I got my first card done today and I don't have the writing that's going to go on the top let me get this in a little bit better light here but I did get, the, for the most part, I did get the card um, figured out here. Um, I did use Pop Dots on Piglet and on Ehor here, so you can't get the, the dimension real good on camera, but that was the card I did. And then up here I'm going to put a cloud or a talk bubble or something to finish it off saying you're invited or whatever it is that she decides she wants the card to say. She always does real elaborate, I keep calling it a card, but it is, it's a, but it's an actually a party invite. Um, and she, I'm going to be making this whole grouping here as a centerpiece as well. That will probably end up being about oh, a foot and a half or two feet long with the tree. But when I do that, I will film that and show you when that's all done. So, those are my projects for today. We have my um, Thomas the train. I can't even remember his name. Thomas and Pooh Invite. Thank you very much and have a great night. Bye-bye.